Not there for here? Hi everyone, welcome back to Intuition, where we go behind the scenes of academia to figure out what students really care about. And today I'm your co-host Pauline in my fourth year studying economics at UBC. And my name is Tristan and I'm a recent graduate here at UBC. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. Okay, welcome back everyone to Intuition. Today is going to be Tristan and I's final podcast on intuition and we're super sad about that but um (laughs) you know it's like it's there's always you know a time to move on and you know transition into new things and that's kind of what we're going through right now Mm -hmm. and but we definitely want to put you guys in the hands of you know some very capable co-hosts that will be taking on um intuition and we'll be passing on the baton essentially and so we'd like to introduce them today if you guys would like to introduce yourselves hi my name is lila i am a graduating um, undergrad student in va history and it's my final year at ubc hey my name is flint and uh, i'm also graduating it's my final year i'm uh, graduating from international relations program Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. And you guys were CLCAs, so so yeah. um, Chapman Learning Commons Assistants. Mm-hmm. So the lovely people who help you at the desk with equipment, tech help, all of that, they um, essentially are transitioning from that role into working on the podcast. Mm-hmm. So what are you guys going to miss the most about being on the desk, if anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh like, when you consider it kind of vis-a-vis the podcast, pretty much mm-hmm. nothing, because the podcast is really cool. Right. But with regards to, like, what I actually like about the desk is it's quite fun to actually just sit back for two hours and just literally toss some chargers, as, as Nick would say, <laughs> um, and just chat with some really nice people that kind of share my sort of experience and worldview. So yeah. I'll miss that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, for me, I think apart from just working with a really big team of amazing people, I think I'm just going to be, I'm just going to miss being at the heart of like where the undergrad student action is and mm-hmm. seeing people just going at it um, on a day-to-day basis. Um, mm-hmm. I just really love how fast-paced and intense um, being in that environment is. Yeah, mm. you guys probably have some interesting stories about <laughs> oh, yeah. experiences. <laughs> yeah, because even now it's finals and, you know, you see a lot of people. Some people are going crazy. Some people are mm. unusually calm. And, you know, it's just <laughs> just like a variety of people that you get at the desk. Mm. Um, but um, so there are a lot of things that you guys could have been doing today. Well, during the summer, you could have, both of you are graduating, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, why did you guys decide to, you know, take on the podcast at Chapman? Um, I think for me, um, just continuing sort of like being in the bubble of the CLC is a really um, good way to build up what I already have in terms of my knowledge. And also, um, I think being the podcast allows me to sort of like practice my multimedia skills because on top of like working on the podcast, I'll also be doing some of the multimedia skills. And I think for me, for someone who's really interested in working in a field that's creative and that's dynamic and maybe a bit fast paced too, I think working the podcast um, will be beneficial for my resume and also for my um, life experiences. Mm -hmm. Uh, To be honest, for me, like it it's honestly not remotely work related. I just I'm really into podcasts. I listen to them all the time. Mm-hmm. I'm a pretty creative person. Like I make yeah. music and like I've mm-hmm. I've used the same sort of recording systems and you know I mm-hmm. I like writing and stuff like that. So just mm-hmm. the idea the opportunity to sort of be creative for a living mm-hmm. yeah. Is, yeah. is just really exciting for me. Yeah. That's nice. really good. Yeah, so like you mentioned you listen to mm-hmm. podcasts and mm-hmm. um what are some ways that you guys both of you guys could contribute and expand on this uh, project? For sure. Um, I'll I'll go first. Um, One thing that I like to do is I like to be sort of that hard-hitting journalist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to tackle some – there's a lot of issues that were were great that you guys did, you know, with Mm -hmm. regards to things that are relative to students' lives. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you had the LGBTQ uh, episode um, with Mm -hmm. Yadu last Mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, there's some other ones about sort of time management and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But one thing I want to do is I want to get it sort of – um, some more controversial issues, maybe some things that yeah. we all know about, but mm. you know, you're not going to hear yeah. so much from the university itself. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good one, and that's like what people can really relate mm-hmm. to 
because you know as much as like UBC is a community and we mm. love being here there are you know definitely those pitfalls that you can see those little cracks and mm-hmm. sometimes i feel like some people talk around them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i think it's it's great that you guys want to you know be more controversial mm-hmm. <laughs> if you if you wish definitely. so that's yeah that's mm-hmm. cool um i think for me i just want to be able to get up more of the um like daily everyday student voice that's not being heard because that's why i'm concerned i know you guys that uh, i know you guys bring about um, people who are sort of like well known for that they do like like mm-hmm. some very popular stuff or student mm-hmm. alumni recently. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do kind of want to have like an official voice for something, but I also want to perhaps more have an informal voice um, mm-hmm. of yeah. students coming to the podcast. So I think Flynn and I were discussing about having more student engagement via mm-hmm. Twitter, Instagram, mm-hmm. and just to yeah. sort of break mm-hmm. from that official bubble. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. So in terms of outreach, would mm. like social media be your only platform? What are some ways? We are actually thinking of doing more of like street interviews. So yeah. I mean, we just go maybe in front of IKB, grab the camera and be like, hey, you, like, what do you think about this? <laughs> um, yeah, and yeah, we can yeah. just hopefully we'll have some very cool inputs um, yeah. during the nice, summer. Nice. Yeah. So I plan on having a really active social media <laughs> presence. Like I'll yes. just sit there all day. <laughs> yeah. Before I'm in the morning. Yeah. I'm going to start tweeting at Donald Trump so that he'll <laughs> tweet us out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's if you tweet at Donald Trump, that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> so just like going off of that and getting like the raw and cut, you know, student voice. Mm-hmm. So you guys working on the desk, you've probably heard a lot of conversations mm-hmm. that have happened between students about different things mm-hmm. that you know, maybe they're worried about or they're, they don't agree with or they're even, mm-hmm. you know, really happy with. Mm-hmm. So what are some of those conversations that you guys have heard? I think one of the conversations I've heard so far is about the challenges of navigating um, both student and like academic life at UBC. I think I've heard some people just questioning why is it so hard to, you know, maybe get a charger in? You know, why is it so hard to book an appointment? And I think they're sort of like frustrated with this whole maybe complex bureaucracy that exists at UBC. Mm. Um, so I think um, we probably would want to sort of like break it down um, into detail what it means to be a student at UBC and how do students engage with the you know the bigger institution on a day-to-day basis Mm. and really get into the core of this idea of being a UBC student attending UBC and this Mm. whole you know image and idea that we're so ingrained into with. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I think is really controversial nowadays that I actually heard at the desk and, Mm -hmm. and, and I've heard before, but it was interesting when it happened at the desk was this whole debate, especially in Canada with, Mm -hmm. with the whole controversy at U of T uh, Mm -hmm. about free speech and like Mm -hmm. that, Mm -hmm. that line between, um, you know, like what's acceptable and what isn't with regards Mm -hmm. to speaking. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually was at the desk one day and I had the, for those of you who don't know, there's a student at UBC who actually emailed out a thousand emails and dropped a thousand letters across campus in various different dorms and to various different professors about how there's this specter Mm. basically encroaching on free speech in the universities and i met him at the desk and he was he was nowhere near this sort of crazy figure that you know the ubc and some other mediums make him out to be you know this sort of crazy evil man Mm -hmm. who's actually a very kind person who just had some concerns and i think Mm -hmm. it'd be nice to sort of touch on that sort of issue just because i feel like when people do talk about it, you're either far one side or far the other, yeah. and there's not really sort of a middle ground. Mm-hmm. He called me a diplomat for saying that. Oh. So <laughs> I'd like to have a diplomatic talk about that. Right, yeah. right. So how are you guys going to approach these sort of conversations and mm-hmm. transition it into, you know, this medium mm-hmm. of a podcast mm-hmm. that, you know, everybody is able to relate to and mm-hmm. have access to? Mm-hmm. One thing I want to try and do is, it's almost impossible. Everyone's going to try and tell you that they're unbiased. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my best, instead of just saying I'm completely unbiased, to come out and give you the facts from both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to make sure that I'm well-read on both sides, Mm -hmm. and I want to try and Mm -hmm. empathize with both of them with instead of just kind of like giving Mm -hmm. you more of the story that maybe I agree with. Mm -hmm. And I'd hope that maybe there's some issues that maybe me and Lila disagree with. Yeah, and yep. and then she can present one, and I can present the other, and we, it doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. need to be argumentative. No, no. <laughs> but but at the same time, I think it's really good to be well read up on mm-hmm. on those topics on both sides and try and present yeah. a even keel. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I think for me, I just really want to transform this platform into a more open head-to-head dialogue Mm -hmm. Um, because I think Flynn and I, Mm -hmm. we both agree that we really hate fluffy um, things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just things that are not direct, and I like being direct and open about stuff. Mm -hmm. So maybe having a very sort of like a well-organized I would say confrontation, quote unquote, mm-hmm. between maybe let's say someone from a university official and an, you know, an undergrad student who's maybe upset about something. Mm-hmm. Right. They can sort of like you know have the opportunity to really engage in a very deep conversation. Yeah. Um, that can be beneficial to I think um, everyone in the uni. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think you got you brought up something interesting yeah. about the fluffy um, rhetoric, mm-hmm. if you would say. Mm-hmm. Um, like, have you experienced that at UBC? And, you know, what do you think about that? Or how how do you wish to, you know, mm-hmm. add to that or, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. move away from that? Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on, on that? Um, I think um, the, the thing that comes off on top of my head right now is when you, you were talking about your experience in a co-op position where they were trying to um, hype up the idea of student life. Mm-hmm. Um, I... So you're asking if I have... Um, yeah, so, like, what, what do you think about the rhetoric, you know, that uh, the, the quote-unquote fluffy rhetoric at UBC? And, like, is that kind of the area you guys are going to? Or how do you intend on, you know, moving away from that? Hmm. Yeah, I could say a few things about that. Um, I, I think that the kind of student life that UBC likes to trump up mm-hmm. with regards to sort of its... It's outreach and stuff like that oftentimes isn't the sort of stu- student life that connects with all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more so the one that connects to students that don't have as many worries or maybe mm-hmm. just on top of it. And, and you know, it, it doesn't even matter necessarily whether you've got the money or the grades to sort of mm-hmm. be comfortable. There's people here that struggle and, yeah. and can't connect with that sort of student yeah. life mm-hmm. that they're trumping up. And, and yeah. what I mean by that, like just to be more specific, is mm-hmm. this sort of oh, well, you know, you need to spend four hours a day on campus in various different clubs. Well, it's mm-hmm. like, I've got an eight-hour job, yep. mm-hmm. right? Yep. And and then they'll say, well, you know, well, why are you working eight hours? Why don't you take out a big loan? I'll say, well, because I don't want to be indebted for life. <laughs> right. And it's even worse for, you know, international students, right? Mm-hmm. And so this sort of, uh, that's that's kind of what I would say. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I completely get that. And um, oh, sorry. oh, sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the first thing that comes to my mind, I think, is just how... Um, I think the institution it seems that just because uh, we as a millennial we are kind of like have easily access sorry easy access to information and they think that having this sort of like fluffy information um, is a good textbook for us to use but mm-hmm. when in fact not the textbook doesn't apply to all of us mm-hmm. like if someone tells me that oh you should join the club that having mm-hmm. this like joining a club seems to be like um, this um, <laughs> big important thing that you have mm-hmm. to do in undergrad but like I, I've mm-hmm. been to so many club meetings I can't engage with anything apart mm-hmm. from maybe something that has to do with my culture um, mm-hmm. and and I prefer to work instead so that I can maybe mm. save money and go traveling. Yeah. Um, so I definitely feel that they have this mentality that we like a textbook idea of what mm. it means to experience university. Mm-hmm. Um, when in fact, that is so not true. Mm. Yeah. So you guys are wanting to break down that, that those <laughs> barriers, break those textbooks. Yeah. 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 I kind of want to break this sort of, it's not necessarily a classified, but, but for mm. lack of a better phrase, I'll yeah. say that. Mm. Between, you know, the students that are completely, well, maybe not without worry, but comparatively less without worry than yeah. you know the vast majority of us that mm-hmm. are and mm-hmm. you know I, and I want to try and outreach those students rather than the ones mm-hmm. that are just kind of sitting at the student quote unquote student leadership roles who right. already right. have everything worked yeah. out right right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. yeah that that really does make sense mm-hmm. and um so how what are you guys expecting your dynamic to be like work you know working on the podcast mm-hmm. because you guys have mm-hmm. worked a bit together mm-hmm. on the desk yeah. but mm-hmm. what are you kind of expecting from being more closely, um, you know, collaborating more closely Mm -hmm. with each other? Um, I think for me, I just expect to really learn a lot um, because I think just hearing from Flint talking about that's what I, I think I've learned a lot um, I know that he's a very engaged person mm-hmm. so I know that I also be super engaged and he also he is also really energetic mm-hmm. um, so I know that I will um, probably learn a lot from him mm-hmm. um, and I'm just really quite excited at this point mm-hmm. of time yes. honestly I, I much appreciate it I, I <laughs> couldn't you. have been more excited when I found out that I was working with Lila like oh, I, yeah. I, I specifically went out and when they told when I asked Andrea that like they're yeah. the, the overseer yeah, uh, she, she. I just, I literally sort of kind of whip. I was like, I love her Aww. because 
<laughs> it's, she, she's one of the few people that I think, like, on the desk, I loved almost everybody, but... Mm. Uh, special, guys. But, almost jealous, everybody. Yeah. But I feel like there's a, there's, there isn't that sort of disconnect with sort of worldview. Yeah. I, 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 I understand yeah. what right. she's saying. I understand where she's coming from, and there's right. never sort of a moment where I think, like, what are you talking about? Right? <laughs> 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 okay, so you guys, you feel like you guys are, like, on the same, you know, wavelength. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah, that's an interesting dynamic. But yeah. you, but we brought up earlier, too, mm. that, you know, not only do you guys want to have the same worldview in a sense, but mm. also have that, you know, dialectic yeah. conversation. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Not, not necessarily a debate, but, For like, sure, yeah. you yeah. know, head, you know, butt heads once in a while, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, that, that I think that propels the, the project a little further, right? Yeah. It makes it more interesting and engaging. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. Oh, sorry. And I think I just, I think I'm quite confident that I can engage in a debate with Flynn without feeling mm. offended or sensitive because mm-hmm. I just know that, I mean, like, I'm a history major, right? So, like, yeah. we debate so many times and I just yeah. feel that, like, um, yeah. when we disagree on something, there's always that, you know, one person who's trying to shut you down just because mm-hmm. it's a personal thing but yeah. with like, I think with Flynn I know that like that mm-hmm. is not like a disrespectful manner or anything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah I also think that it's uh, even though we sort of communicate well we don't necessarily have the same worldview as far as where we're coming from yeah true mm-hmm. yeah. so for example like you know you're from halfway across the world <laughs> yeah. and, I, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm and yeah. I'm a local yeah. you know I, I, I'm a man you're yeah. a woman yeah. that, you know and, mm. and, and even if you want to like pick at um, sort of what we studied like Mine is really current to NC, mm-hmm. and then again, yours is really history. So yeah. I think there's there's, mm-hmm. there's definitely it's a clear definitely yeah. There, yeah. cool. That's good. Yeah, it will be really interesting to hear how you guys play on that. So now that we've got a pretty good idea of what me and Lyle are like, uh, maybe we kind of turn around on you guys just because you guys are yeah. heading out and maybe pick your brain about what you guys definitely. are going to do in the future. So yeah. 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 So uh, Paul and Tristan, my mm-hmm. first question for you is: um, So you've been in this role since the beginning of the academic year. Um, what did you both learn from one another and what can you bring into your transition um, post grad? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to start? Sure. So um, one thing that I definitely learned from Pauline was um, being able to communicate properly. Mm-hmm. Uh, before this project and before uh, joining the podcast, I thought I was a pretty good communicator. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. I thought I was able to connect with, the, with anyone in a, in a sense, you know. But um, when I started this project, it's, you know, I was lacking in many areas. Mm-hmm. So what, what I mean by communication is um, getting my ideas out effectively mm-hmm. and uh, coherently enough, you know. Um, some, of, some of my ideas were, like, tough to get out, and I was really wrestling with it, right? So Pauline was able to show me ways, you know, write down things, little things, you know. Write down what you want to do, be more organized, be more structured. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to go into projects and assignments not fully, fully structured, right? You know, I would have things here and there, but it didn't come together. It didn't culminate. So Pauline kind of showed me, you know, you got to be more organized and structured. And if we want to tackle this project, this is how we're going to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess it's her uh, economics background and mm-hmm. sort of like a <laughs> business yeah, yeah, efficiency, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I'm kind of like the, I was kind of the untamed kind of spirit, mm-hmm. you know, in a sense. So uh, Pauline definitely showed me, you know, she provided better communication and better structure in, in, in what I do here. And, you know, I'm going to carry that to my next journey was that ever maybe was mm-hmm. that ever tough you know did you guys ever oh you know? man yeah um so pauline and i are very good friends we were mm-hmm. good friends before this project mm-hmm. you know um, oh. yeah you know she was she's very close to me now and um she was actually the one that introduced me to this uh to this team you know mm-hmm. so um you know going into this i'm like oh yeah i'm gonna work with a good friend that i care about all mm-hmm. a lot you know and uh as we were talking about you know talking about the whole project before you know there's gonna be moments where you're gonna clash heads once in a while you're gonna mm-hmm. have some conversations that you may not agree with or talk about themes or topics that you may have a different perspective or or mm-hmm. a different approach to right mm-hmm. so we had that on you know a couple occasions and you know uh it was really tough to like i said m- my part in it was i wasn't really communicating efficiently i wasn't really structured so you know you know there was kind of i could see that was weighing on pauline a bit right mm-hmm. so i had to really self-reflect and look at a way how i could have approach this differently right mm-hmm. so we had moments where we sat down and we were like okay you know put the stop recording and just yeah. rewind and take a you know a deep breath and mm-hmm. you know and say okay how can we do this you know mm-hmm. how can we approach this differently where we both are on the same path and the same level you know and um she had the patience i also learned the patience you know from yeah. her too you know you're going to be working with you know wherever you may go you might be working with someone that's may be moving at a different speed or you know, pace as you. You know, I'm not saying they are moving too slow. You know, they could be moving too fast, but 
you may have respect for them still no matter what but it's just yeah. like you may want to be moving at a certain sp- pace yeah and they may not be at that pace yet mm-hmm. so I, I could i sensed uh and i got from her you know patience is virtue you know we always hear yeah, that you know yeah. pretty cliche but it's true you know you gotta be patient and sit back and really analyze you know on how can we just make this more efficient that's what it is mm-hmm. the quality of the work you know mm-hmm. yeah. and uh once we get past that you know the quality gets better you know so mm-hmm. i learned communication ha- providing more structure and patience mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. yeah well, thank you for all the nice things you said. Um, I, just going off of that as well, I think that just learning about um, different working styles, that's something that I learned from our partnership together as well. Um, what I mean by that is like usually in roles that I've had in the past, I think I've just kind of had the same, pretty much the same working style as mm-hmm. most people that I've had, uh, I've worked with. So, um, like, just touching on that as well as, like, as as Tristan said, I am a bit more, like, detailed, sometimes to the point where I'm, like, nitpicky about stuff. Mm-hmm. And I would say that he's more, like, big picture. Yeah. And so it was interesting to have, like, that kind of dynamic. Um, and sometimes it was hard for me because I'm like, why aren't we focusing on these, you know, little things? But he's more looking at like how it all like just comes together, how like looking at it from a zoomed out perspective. And so for us, I think it could it could have been like a clash on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. But then we had to figure out a way where we could have like we could put those two mindsets together and have it work to, you know, the betterment of the podcast. So, Mm -hmm. like, um, I would tend to, you know, pick out the stuff that was more detailed Mm -hmm. and then he would be able to see how it all comes together. And I think Mm -hmm. that helped us um, kind of in the long run. So Mm -hmm. I think that's... I, I learned to be as you said more patient and um also be able to like work with different people who Mm. have different styles and Mm. learn from it as well Mm -hmm. so that was interesting for me nice Mm -hmm. so knowing that it sounds like you guys learn quite a bit of each other from each other Mm -hmm. so with regards to like what you guys are going to do next Mm -hmm. like one what do you guys think you want to do moving mm-hmm. forward and mm-hmm. if it's not clear you know mm-hmm. that's okay mm-hmm. and two is there any way you think you can kind of apply what you guys got from each other to mm-hmm. what you want to do moving mm-hmm. forward definitely yeah. yeah um well for me i want to go into finance mm-hmm. and yeah it's kind of hard seeing how you know podcasting <laughs> finance <laughs> compares but i think when you really look at it like if i think about the the things that we did even just to prepare for each podcast mm-hmm. and then the things that we did after each podcast yeah. i can definitely pick out some skills for example um with like meetings you know when we would have to prepare for the meetings that we would meet with um the bigger web team mm-hmm. so our supervisors you know, you have to come up with a proposal. You have to come up with, like, think through ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, even sometimes we had to report back on, you know, different things that we found out, like maybe in mm-hmm. terms of, like, social media or, you know, the downloads with the podcast, things like that. Mm-hmm. So I think when you're presenting, that's something that is going to come up in, like, any type of, yeah. you know, workplace mm-hmm. situation. Yeah. Um, and so I think it really helped me with, say, like, my public speaking skills and yeah. just being more confident mm-hmm. with, in my ideas and pitching yeah. that to somebody else and mm-hmm. saying, hey, you know, this is what I think, this is why I think it's mm-hmm. relevant and mm-hmm. making back those connections. So yeah. I think that's something that mm-hmm. is going to stay with me. And now mm-hmm. I know that that's a skill that I have mm-hmm. because before this, I honestly didn't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, I think that's something that I'm going to keep on working yeah. on and mm-hmm. yeah, do better. Yeah, and you're just today going to work in commercial banking, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of that like yeah, presentable. Exactly. And, yeah. You have to pitch to clients like businesses and they have to believe in, you know, what you you're, mm. you know, selling mm. or, you know, what you're pitching for their business because it's, sure. it's very important to mm-hmm. them. And so you have to be able to be confident in your ideas. So, um, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for me, um, I'm going to be going into do I'm doing youth counseling work for a nonprofit right mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And uh, down the line, uh, probably within the next two years, precisely, I- I'm thinking about graduate school as well. Right. So for me, you know, the skills that I've taken, like Pauline has mentioned, um, you know, going into meetings, uh, 
coming up with proposals, taking notes, you know, before, like, you know, I wasn't really organized to that extent, mm -hmm. you know, now I'm, you know, I'm taking this, I'm learning from it, I'm learning from my shortcomings, you know, I didn't do this properly, now this is what I need to do, it's really important, uh, for me also being able to speak in a public space, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not be in, uh, inhibited to a certain extent, and just, because, you know, you're going to be, for me, it's going to be kind of, okay, maybe they might not like my ideas, you know, they may not like my, you know, the direction where I want to go. But, you know, it's, you know, you got to be open up for criticism. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, proper criticism, too. Like, so these meetings we go into, we have this idea. It's not really organized yet. It's not really come together. But we get guidance from our supervisors. They tell us, okay, this is the direction. I like what you're doing. You know, maybe take it this way. Take it up a notch here, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's open. It's like, wow, really, it's really engaging. And it's just like opening yourself up to criticism, but mm -hmm. constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing that. And it's going to, you know, like when I, when I do youth counseling, I'm going to be working in a pro, you know, within a team environment. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, I may not gel completely well with some of the team members mm -hmm. you know the team members that i've met they seem really you know they seem really nice but mm -hmm. like i said there's gonna be moments where you're not gonna see eye to eye in certain situations and uh you may be very close to them outside you know but mm -hmm. you know within a formal setting it's gonna be like okay i want to do this this way yeah. you know as Polly mentioned she's very detail oriented right and uh, i'm trying to look at the bigger picture holistically yeah so but you know it's just in a professional setting, you got to combine those two. True. You know, when you combine right, those true. two, they're going to be really efficient and effective, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So just, you know, that's what I've learned here, and that's what I plan to carry on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to uh, my work with nonprofits and as well as graduate school. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so nice. yeah. So um, final question for our, t uh, for our two lovely hosts today. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's uh, – you've been in the podcast for all, over like eight months, and if there's something that you could do differently after all the episodes as you've done, mm -hmm. um, what would it be? Hmm. I think um, in terms of the topics that we touched on, mm -hmm. I think they were really great. But like you guys said, I don't feel like we fully like took it to the to the Next I don't level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking for the words or the words. Yeah. Um and yeah, I think that maybe we could have done a bit more with like those hard hitting topics mm. that really like I don't want to say shock people but mm. but are like more surprising because there are those things that you know people on campus kind of shy away from yeah. so I think it was kind of our duty to bring those topics mm. to light mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something that I would have done differently but then I also have to keep in mind that there are there were limits to what mm -hmm. I could realistically do mm -hmm. especially because I had so much going on with mm -hmm. like school working mm -hmm. two jobs and all that stuff so I am like a bit more lenient on myself in that sense but if I could do if I could have done more if I had mm -hmm. more time I would have you know try to take it to the next mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree with Paulina. She mentioned limits. You know, for me as well, I faced a lot of limits. And these were personal limits, too. It's towards the end of the project. And um, that kind of set me back in terms of taking it to the next level and being a real, like, you know, a real proper teammate, right? But, um, yeah, I mean, there's a thin line of what we could really talk about and, like, being mm -hmm. controversial. you got to be very cognizant of all that because, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're operating within a university True. campus, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be, like, you know... We want to be controversial. We want to talk about what students are really feeling. And that's the mission. That's what we need to do. Yeah. You know, but we also have to be mindful of the university, too, unfortunately, right? Yeah. To a certain extent. Well, I think you also got to be mindful of, mm -hmm. of people that go to the university. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like, you know, then we, we, we hinted yeah. on it earlier. Yeah. Like, you know, we're not going to, we don't want to come in bias being like, okay, we're going to be pro, pro uni or anti uni, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but you just got to be mindful and just know the thin line. Yeah. And that, that takes a lot of professionalism. And that's like I said, true. you got to be cognizant of that. So that, that's the thing that I wish I, you know, was able to do to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And like, because I feel like that elevates the content a bit, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like you, when you, when you step back and be like, okay, all right, I know all the parties involved, but like, how can I elevate this? You know? Mm -hmm. So like and test the boundaries. Test the boundaries. Breaking breaking, them. Yeah. yeah. And, and that takes a skill. That's a, that's a skill, obviously, yeah. you know, that's professional journalism. Yeah. In a way. yeah mm -hmm. for sure. So that's, you know, the way we approached it, I think we approached it fine, you know, mm -hmm. the way Pauline and I did it. We did talk on 
really important uh, issues, mm-hmm. you know, relating to black history, relating to marginalized people, relating all, you know, all sorts mm-hmm. of things, like mm-hmm. finances, it all affects us. Yep. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, again, you know, elevating that to where we're just mindful of both parties and being like, okay, testing the boundaries, like you said, without yeah. breaking. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's a skill that I wish, <laughs> I wish Pauline and I knew before. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really excited for what you guys are going to come up with. And, mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Thank Definitely. you. Okay. And thank you to all the listeners for giving us your time to, you know, mm-hmm. talk to you guys on a biweekly basis and mm-hmm. hear our thoughts. Um, yeah. And we hope that you continue listening to Intuition. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you.